Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in Freshman English. And we turn now in your handles to the Lee and Dolan text, Carry Your Own Skis. I'm going to start with you on page 518, 519. Uh, as your textbook is continuing to do here, especially in Unit 3, we're going to compare or pair up two different titles. So first we're going to look at the uh, Dolan text, uh, Carry Your Own Skis. Then we're going to look at the Pete Hamill text, uh, Libraries Face Sad Chapter. Um, uh, it, let's jump to 2B really quickly and point out that we'll be working now at the literary analysis topic with what we call persuasion. Here, we'll be working with persuasive essays, and then in text to follow, we'll be working with persuasive speeches. Now, let's make sure we understand what persuasion is, and there it is for you on page 519, write it down. Short, nonfiction work in which the author's purpose is to convince a reader to think or act in a particular way. Persuasive essays usually will include persuasive appeals. The first is appeals to reason, logical arguments based on, ver uh, on verifiable evidence, facts, statistics, expert testimony. And then the second will be appeals to emotion, statements intended to affect listeners' feelings about a subject. These statements often include charged language, words with strong positive or negative associations. As you read persuasive writing, try to identify the author's motive. You want to write that one down. Get that one down in 2B. The author's motive, their intent. Ask why does the author or the writer include this information? We are at reading skill evaluating persuasion, the claims. We're going to analyze, evaluate the author's argument, right? And then we'll have a, um, we'll ask some questions about is the author's argument credible? Is the evidence provided comprehensive? Are the writer's generalizations or broad statements supported by evidence? And then you've even got a graphic organizer at the bottom of page 519 that I hope you fill out in your annotations before you actually and while you're actually doing this work. On page 520, please note again, we have our important question. Is there a difference between knowledge and understanding or wisdom? We've got some vocabulary in play there. Make sure that you know that for the, access, for the assessment as well, right? Let's take a look and meet now Leon Dolan. Uh, she was born in 1966, continues to uh, live and work. Let's read a little bit about her. Leon Dolan is one of the satellite sisters, and by the way, you may make a note that if you're interested in this, um, she is, uh, has a presence online with podcasts that you can see. Uh, one of the satellite sisters, a group of five sisters who host a radio show. Before helping launch the show, Dolan tried everything from working as a waitress to producing films. She also writes the column The Chaos Chronicles for Working Mother magazine. Uh, Leon is known as the sassiest of the sisters. She's not afraid to express her opinions on any topic. Even though Leon is the youngest of the five sisters, she directs all of their writing projects. She enjoys being the head sister, giving orders to her older siblings. Um, and then the uh, did you know information, the satellite sisters live in four different cities on two continents, and they link via satellite for their popular radio show, which is now again a podcast. And after you do this reading, some of you will maybe want to um, you know, invest some time, energy into doing some research about that. The background for this essay, read it with me on 521, Cold Weather Clothing. Before the development of synthetic, lightweight, waterproof fabrics that breathe and keep the wearer dry, keeping warm on the ski slopes meant wearing heavy wool and cotton clothing. Garments made from these fabrics would become wet and cold in the snow and they would stay wet and cold until removed. This will be important because this will be uh, part of the overall essay. Now, let's say two things that we want to point out about this essay. Write it down, and we'll ask these questions as we then come back to the essay itself. One, we're going to ask this question. What's up with this title, Carry Your Own Skis? Notice how some titles are very accessible. Remembering Arthur Ashe pretty much tells you we're going to have an essay about the tennis player Arthur Ashe. But carry your own skis, that's a somewhat more enigmatic title. In other words, it's not so clear. Like, what exactly is this, is this title about as it relates to central purpose? Number two, we're going to ask this question. If this is an argument persuasive essay, what is being argued? Write that down. What is being argued? And then finally in 3B, do I agree or disagree with this position? All right, let's follow along now, the Lee and Dolan text. Uh, and we'll try and answer those questions once we get to the end. Carry Your Own Skis by Liam Dolan. 
When my mother was 40, she took up skiing. Or, more correctly, she and her twin sister took up skiing. They got on a bus, went to ski camp for a week, and learned to ski. After that, they'd get in the car and head up to Ladies' Day at Powder Hill as often as they could to practice their stem Christies. Don't let the name fool you. Powder Hill, which later became the more Everest-like Powder Ridge, was no pushover bunny slope. This was in the mid-60s, when skiing was work, decades before valet parking, fondue lunches, and gear that actually keeps you dry, warm, and safe. My mother and my aunt took up the kind of skiing that entailed wooden skis, tie boots, and rope toes that could jerk your arm out of its socket. This was the kind of skiing where skiers, not the snow cats, groom the hill in the morning. Ticket buyers were expected to sidestep up and down slopes and herringbone the lift lines. The typical A-frame lodge had a big fireplace, a couple of bathrooms, rows of picnic tables, and maybe some hot chocolate for sale. At the end of the day, there were no hot toddies by a roaring fire in furry boots or drinks in the hot tub of a slopeside condo. Instead, my mother and her sister faced the inevitability of a station wagon with a dead battery and the long, dark drive back home in wet clothes. Why did they learn to ski? It wasn't to spend some quality time outdoors together away from their responsibilities at home. They learned to ski so that they could take their collective children skiing, all 17 of us, my mother's eight children and my aunt's nine, and learned to ski we did eagerly. There was, however, one rule my mother had about skiing, carry your own skis. My mother didn't teach us to ski until we could carry our own skis from the car to the lodge in the morning and, this is key, from the lodge back to the car at the end of the day. Even cold, wet, and tired, we had to get our skis, poles, and boots back to that station wagon on our own. No falling behind, no dragging, and no whining. My mother had the responsibility for her gear, the giant lunch, the car, and the occasional trip to the ER for broken legs. We were in charge of our own gear and meeting at the end of the day. These were the conditions to be allowed to accompany siblings and cousins to the slopes. Carry your own skis or sit in the lodge all day. No one wanted to get left in the lodge. A cold, wet day on the ice blue slopes of New England freezing in leather boots and the generation of ski clothes before microfibers was far preferable to being left out of all that fun. Miss the lunches of soggy tuna fish sandwiches and mini chocolate bars? No way! Sit in the lodge instead of side slipping your way down a sheet of ice disguised as a trail or tramping through three feet of snow to get the pole you dropped under the chairlift? Not me! Forgo that last run of the day in near darkness cold and alone and crying because your siblings have skied on ahead without you? Who'd want to miss all that fun? Sitting in the lodge all day just wasn't an option once we reached ski age. We were expected to participate. We learned to carry our own skis. The lesson was simple, really. Be responsible for yourself and your stuff, or you miss out. No one wanted to miss out. Getting across the icy parking lot and back seemed a small price to pay for the potential of great fun. And even if you dropped your poles or the bindings cut into your hands or you fell on your rear end, that was part of the experience. The carry your own skis mentality filtered into almost every area of our life as we were growing up. Doing homework, getting to practice, applying to college, be responsible for yourself and your stuff or you miss out. I began to notice the people who hadn't learned to carry their own skis when I was as young as 11. I didn't have a name for this concept yet, but I had the notion that maybe other kids operated by a different set of rules. They thought that somewhere, somebody was going to take care of things for them. I remember the girls at summer camp who never signed up to pack out or pack in for a camping trip, expecting that someone else would provide food or do all the cleanup for them. But me, I would sign up to make the PB and J's and to clean up the mess. I'd load the canoes onto the truck and take them off again. And the tent, I'd put it up and I'd take it down. I didn't know any different. As a result, I was invited to go on a lot of camping trips. The lodge and back, baby, that was my attitude. In high school, 
the kids who didn't carry their own skis, called their parents to bring in assignments they'd forgotten, or to ask for a ride home instead of walking or taking the late bus. In college, the no ski carriers all had pink t-shirts, a sure sign that they had never done laundry before, and they complained about how much work they had. Isn't that what college was about? Doing your own laundry and finishing your work? Then you could get to the fun stuff. The real world is riddled with people who have never learned to carry their own skis. The blame shifters, the no RSVPers, the co-workers who never participate in those painful group birthdays, except if it's their own. I admit it, I don't really get these people. I like the folks who clear the dishes, even when they're the guests. Or the committee members who show up on time, assignment completed and ready to pitch in on the next event. Or the neighbor who drives the carpool even though her kids are sick. I get these people. These people have learned to carry their own skis. In early adulthood, carrying my own skis meant getting a job, paying off my student loans, and working hard for the company that was providing my paycheck. If I did those things, then I could enjoy the other areas of my life. Dull, yes, but free, too. When I wasn't responsible for myself or my stuff, I felt lousy. Sometimes I could get to the lodge, but I just couldn't get back to the station wagon at the end of the day. It was an unfamiliar feeling to let someone down by missing a deadline at work or not showing up for an early morning run. On days like that, the parking lot seemed bigger and icier than I had anticipated. Now I have a life that includes a husband, two children, a dog, a house, friends, schools, and a radio show that involves lots of other people, including four sisters. The stuff of my life may seem much heavier than two skis, two boots, and two poles, but it isn't really. Just a little bit trickier to carry. I have to do more balancing and let go of the commitments that I'd probably drop anyway. If I commit to more than I can handle, I miss out. That's when I think of Powder Hill. The funny thing is, some of the worst moments of my childhood were spent on skis or in pursuit of skiing. The truth is, I didn't really like skiing as a kid, and I wasn't a very good skier. Most days, skiing for me was about freezing rain and constantly trying to catch up to my older, faster, more talented siblings. The hard falls on the hard ice. I could still feel the damp long underwear and the wet wool during the endless ride home. But whether I liked to ski or not didn't really matter. I was expected to learn to ski, and I did. And I also learned that in life, you need to be responsible for yourself and your stuff, or you miss out. The Lodge and Back, baby. All right, now this is a very interesting little essay, and I've had freshmen who have said, this essay kind of challenges me in ways that none of the other readings that we've done challenge because of the simplicity of the word picture. So let's write this down in 2B right away. We've often used the term in 303 about accessibility and difficult kinds of readings versus accessible readings. Most freshmen get it. They understand what's being said here. They just don't like maybe the fact that this is going to be an essay that's going to challenge them on some level. So let's go ahead and write this right away at level one. We know this is going to be an essay that challenges us. Yeah, I already said to you, I wanted you to be able on your own to say something about the title of this essay. Go ahead and write down now what you think's going on here. Carry your own skis. Well, of course, it's simple. It's kind of a symbol, isn't it? The, the, the idea or the phrase, carry your own skis, actually will represent something about a view of life or a philosophy of life. In other words, a way you want to think about maybe living your life or, maybe more to the point, the way you don't live your life so often. And to that degree, this is going to be an essay that challenges you. Let's say it out loud. The author's purpose then is to challenge you. No question. I remember a few years ago, before cell phones, there was a phone in the uh, commons area there for students. I was at the end of the day, it was probably, I don't know, 45 minutes after the bell had rang. And there was a student there on the phone with, I'm assuming, and I assumed it was her mom. Just come and get me. I'm not going to walk. 
wham, she slams uh, the phone on the thing, almost breaks it, and then turns around to see me, and I am her teacher. And she immediately gets this look on her face like, oh crap, I hope he didn't hear me talking that way to my ma. And then all of a sudden, uh, I said, so you need a ride? And she said, yeah, I need a ride. And I said, your ma is going to come and get you? Yeah, she's going to come and get me. Well, why don't you just walk? I am not walking. And I said it then. Don't you live across the street? And she looked at me and she went, well, yeah, but I'm not walking. And I immediately thought of the Leon Dolan piece, Carry Your Own Skis. Now, I have told that story to many of my senior classes and they will all roll their eyes and laugh. But then the minute we actually talk about this idea, they have to admit that while they maybe never demanded that their mother pick them up to give them a ride across the street in their vehicle, they probably did some other things which violated the simple mantra, carry your own skis. Let's break down now, rhetorically, how this brilliant little essay works, and let's go ahead and let it challenge us. I mean, not insult us maybe, but certainly challenge us as we go through it. Notice, we will begin, first of all, by a little bit of background information. Now, why is that important? Because as we've already said in other lectures, some of these readings require a little bit of prior knowledge. I mean, if you don't know what skiing is, for example, then much of this is lost on you. You know what I'm saying? Let's say, for example, that you are a student that maybe lives in the tropics, and you've never even seen a ski slope, and you decide you want to pick this essay up and read it. Well, what is skiing? Like, well, you go to this place and you put this stuff at the bottom of your feet and you kind of go down a hill. And so she gives a little bit of background. Number two, and this is important. Like several other essays, we think here, for example, about that essay that we studied when, before hip hop was hip hop. Notice that this is an essay that talks about then and now in two ways for your notes, in two ways. First of all, then and now as it relates to skiing and ski culture then and now as it relates specifically to Leon Dolan in her life, right? That is to say, things are cha have changed a little bit, okay? And so she introduces us to skiing and the past versus the present. Jot down, what's the major in terms of skiing? And for those of you who are skiers or snowboarders, you can maybe resonate with what's being said here. What's the major difference between what she's outlining about the way it used to be and the way it is now? Well, a lot of students have pointed out the convenience element. You know what I'm saying? I mean, today we have really, really nice clothing that we get to wear so that we do spend the whole day on the, uh, on the mountain in the cold, but it is not really that cold. And, of course, it's a totally different kind of experience when you're on skis or a snowboard that's made now versus one that was made years ago. You agree with me? The technology, those of you who are skaters, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The technology has allowed for the experience to be a much different kind of experience, and she wants to point that out. In other words, let's say this, and very subtle, don't miss this, don't miss this, very subtle. What she's saying is that things are better today than they once were in terms of opportunities, but something is missing that once was taught that's no longer, it seems, so easily taught anymore. Namely, of course, responsibility. Of course, a very subtle message here, and we don't want to miss this at 2A, is that technology has a tendency to help us, but also to hurt us. It makes, for example, skiing better, no question, but technology has a tendency to make us maybe a little less responsible, right? A little less confident, we might even say. The next thing we find out about is that there are 17 kids. I have freshmen that are just cannot believe this. 17 kids who are all going skiing. And then again, the one rule, the key. You got to carry your own skis. No falling behind, no dragging, no whining. I'm with you on 523. Notice the repetitions of no, 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 right? In other words, there are rules, a simple rule. You want to come? You want to have the joy? You're going to make sure that you actually carry your own skis. You got to be responsible, in other words. My mother had the responsibility for everything else. Those were the conditions or the rules to the game. So you can already jump to a 3A observation about rules to the game. This is a different kind of understanding of rules to the game. You want to come with us? 
You take care of yourself. You don't get to come with us until you can carry your own skis. Well, let's put this one in our notes as well. The idea is simple here. You want to be, you want to have the responsibility of being with adults. You have to behave as, a, as an adult would be responsible and take care of whatever, right? Um, and then, of course, note the irony of the rhetorical questions at the bottom of 523, right? She says it. Um, who would want to miss all of the saggy lunches? No way, she says. Who would want to miss foregoing all of that terrible stuff that you're cold and you're wet? No way, not me. In other words, let's put it this way. She says, I, am, I was willing as a child to learn to experience some painful stuff to get what I wanted which is a central lesson and a central observation that you will see often when you read biographies, right? That is to say, I wanted something, and so I needed to go through some hard stuff to get it, right? And then she says it on 524. The lesson, here's the thesis, so let's see it on 524. Read it with me. This is close reading. Read it with me. Top of 524. First paragraph. The lesson was simple, really. Be responsible for yourself and your stuff, or you miss out. No one wanted to miss out, right? The carry your own skis mentality attitude filtered into almost every area of our life as we were growing up. Doing homework, getting to practice, applying to college. Be responsible for yourself and your stuff or you miss out. All right, there's your thesis. Jot that one down. There's your persuasive thesis. In other words, what's the argument that she's making? If you want to be successful, if you want to have a good time, if you want to have a great life, a simple rule. Take care of your own stuff. Carry your own skis. Make sure that you take care of it. We then have an interesting shift on page 524. She says, I began to notice the people who hadn't learned to carry their own skis. And let's point it out. Hey, 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 it's at this point this essay can start to become a little uncomfortable. I've actually had freshmen who, when I'm teaching this essay, they stop taking notes and they start doing something else. Maybe they're doodling.